this is, this is, this is. Hey, what's up, you guys? Brand new episode of the podcast starting right now. I'm just hitting things around me, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get it done. Um, your voicemails coming up really soon. I just wanted to say this Friday, Christmas Eve Eve, if you celebrate Christmas, you know about Christmas Eve. But the Eve of Christmas Eve, that's December 23rd. That's a Friday night. MXPX is playing a free show, actually live on the internet. So wherever you follow us, if you're, on a, if you're a Facebook person or an Instagram person, you can watch us wherever you like. Um, personally, I think YouTube or Facebook is probably the best, the best looking place to, to see it. Um, YouTube, probably the best. I don't know. I might be crazy. Um, get in the comment section. Let us know what you want to hear. We'll try to do some fun stuff. But uh, we definitely are planning on playing our favorite Christmas songs and some... You know, some of our favorite songs, period, and things like that. So, um, might drink a beer or two. I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it. Let's have some fun. This Friday night, 6.30 p.m. PST. That's West Coast time. And I would I would definitely suggest getting in early. I was just uh, doing a test um, talking about, you know, get in early. But you really want to get in early into the chat room or just just turn on the live stream just to make sure it's working. Make sure that you've got the right connections going on. The audio is good. Um, I noticed, you know, when I did my test, the reverb was really loud. Like that's not going to, you know, like I don't like that. We won't we'll turn that down a little bit like um, things like that. You know, so we got to test it out. We got to make sure it's all working. There's um, all these like stream keys to enter into the, the the web browser things, and it's just it's a lot of tech techy stuff. Um, but what I look forward to is after all that's set up and done, just getting that bass strapped on, singing into that microphone, playing with my good friends, and saying what's up to you guys as you're in the chat rooms because I love it when people are in the chat rooms talking to each other, talking amongst each other, making jokes, making up drinking games like. I always do in practice, I'll do like a lot of drinking games, like not real drinking games. I'll be like, okay, drinking game. Anytime Yuri hits the snare, <laughs> it's just like, do, 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 do. Like, all right, drink, 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 shot, 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 shot. So, yeah, we get crazy in practice. We don't actually do all those shots, by the way. So, just a thought, thinking of all the, all right, kids, let's do it. Um, we'll see you there this Friday, though. I'm, I'm, I'm psyched. I'm so psyched. Um, what else? MXPeaks.com. We still have some holiday gear left. Um, 30 years. We got these t-shirts. Look at that. Look at that. We got 30 years t-shirts and we got, uh, what else? A bunch of other things. We got hoodies and, and, you know, just MXPeaks merch and we got vinyl, lots of vinyl. Um, go check out what we got. Um, of course, you know about the reissues, but maybe you don't. I don't know. Who knows? Um, thank you for uh, celebrating 30 years with us. We've been kind of shy about the 30-year thing. We we did make merch and all that, but we haven't like put a big campaign together. Put out I put out a video July 6 on our birthday. That was cool. That was very cool. But um, but I do appreciate it, and it, and it is important. It's it's important in in the the grand scheme of things, but it's not important right now. Because I feel like right now we're just so busy trying to stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. So 30 years is great. Boom. But staying in the moment is like, okay, now we're 30 years going on whatever we're doing. You know, so um, I honestly have no idea. I feel like MXPX could be around forever if, uh, if people still in the future want to listen to our music, you know. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens, right? Thanks to you guys. Uh, if you want to call in, let me know. If I'm, a, if I'm thinking completely crazy or if I'm thinking the right things, call me, 360-830-6660. I appreciate you. Um, I know I haven't gotten to some of your suggestions, but that's because, like, you know, it's like I can't do everything. But um, I can do a lot of things when I put my mind to it. I can, I can, and we all can. Um, but I'm just thinking like right now popped into my head, Josh Jones popped into my head, a uh, previous caller from a few episodes ago, local, local Kitsap guy, uh, Navy guy, 
a uh, great guy. Um, he suggested we have, you know, some, you know, an episode with some, some callers, but live doing it live. And I'm not opposed to that, but it's just like, I need somebody to kind of, when you do something that involved, you need a producer that actually produces things like goes out, talks to people. So I might have Bob do that. Bob's my producer and he might, he might get into that, but he's not super, super, uh, he's super busy, so he's not super like free right now to just hang out and, and do all these projects for me. Um, and he's still working on the podcast all the time. It's just like I don't want to give him more jobs to do. So maybe next year we'll get it going and we'll get some of you guys on live. Whether it'll probably just be like Skype kind of thing, you know, where you just call in on a video and and uh, we talk. We can make that happen. I'm sure we can. But like I said, it's just hard to make happen when I'm, me and Bob are really the only ones doing things. And I'm not doing much, to be honest, because I'm uh, really working on MXPX stuff. And as you know, this live stream's coming up. And after that is Christmas. And then after that is New Year's. And then uh, after that is all the things that we're trying to plan. And um, I don't want to overwhelm. Am I making you guys nervous just talking about all the things that need to be done? I'm trying to like do the opposite. I'm trying to like take it one day at a time. Baby steps are okay. I mean, at some point you do have to do some deep work, but if you get a little bit done every day, that does add up. It really does. I talked about this last week. I'm talk I'm still talking about it. I've been talking about it all week long every day and I'm still talking about it. So baby steps. That's right. All right, let's get to your voicemails. Let's see what you guys have to say. Um, okay, I didn't, sorry. I think this is the second week in a row I did that. Here we go. Hey, Mike, this is Steve Moffer here. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, Steve. question is with MXPX and family, has there any, has there been any kind of like rivalry with siblings or any kind of like jealousy because maybe MXPX was taken over? Sibling, rubber. Uh, anyways, I uh, love what you're doing. Love everything. Can't wait to see you next, man. And, uh, yeah, rock on. Dude, Steve, thanks for calling in, man. First time. Very cool. Um, that's an interesting question because I think you're onto something. I, I mean, I, looking back on my childhood, I can't speak for, for my other guys, but my childhood, I I always got along with my sisters. I have an older sister, a younger sister. And my younger sister was mischievous when she was young. But as I started doing MXPX more and more, I took more and more attention from, from my parents, really. I took their attention to help me with this, help me with this, you know. And, and MXPX was getting so busy that it left my sisters. My, my older sister was pretty much gone to college by the time MXPX was really doing much. But my younger sister was just, you know, in, in going into maybe just starting, not even junior high. I would say she would be late, late elementary school. Um, I think we're five years apart. So, so she got the short end of the stick when it came to my parents. And they still babied her and they, they did whatever. But I'm sure that some of that fell through the cracks. And, and I do feel a little bad about that looking back. Um, but I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking, I want to do this. How can I do this? I'm doing this. And I wasn't thinking about my sister. I wasn't thinking about my other sister. I wasn't thinking about my parents even, really. I was thinking about myself. I was thinking about what this could be. And um, as a kid, I don't know. I don't know what else I could have really done. I, I still I still feel like musicians and artists are stunted in a lot of ways. Um Although a lot of artists are very emotional and very um, introspective, it's it's not it's like because of, I don't know why I don't know why that is, but but um, it doesn't it doesn't mean that I really was thinking about the right things at the time, you know. Concerned about the wrong things can definitely steer you in the wrong direction, right? Um, 
But, you know, my sister and I, my younger sister, we fought just like always. And we get along now. We're fine. Um, we, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's probably it's probably like my fault for a lot of things. But at the same time, you got to go. You know what? This is the way the cookie crumbled. This is my life. This is the cards I was dealt. And you really got to. You got to take the bull by the horns and make something out of out of whatever you got. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And 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 that doesn't mean that other people aren't disadvantaged versus advantaged. I'm not saying that at all. That's very true. But no matter what, uh, I feel like adversity actually kind of makes you stronger, right? Like like when you're forced to fight against something, you're that's that's why resistance training, strength resistance, uh, weightlifting, you know, it it. It's hard to do, but it makes you stronger. So doing something difficult, doing something that stresses you um, will inevitably help you. As long as you don't break, you know, bend, but do not break. Um, interesting question, though, Steve. And uh, different kind of sibling rivalry. It was more like, you know, vying for attention. And, and my sister definitely acted out, as, as a lot of kids do, and, and in her own way. Um, getting into trouble, getting into, you know, whatever she was getting into, right? So, but she turned out good. She's got a full-time job. She's working and doing her thing. So married, has, you know, has kids, that kind of deal. Um, let's go to the next caller. Hey, Mike. It's Stephen from Wisconsin. And first of all, I wanted to say thank you for coming to Milwaukee uh, last month. I'm aware that Milwaukee is not exactly an A market. Um, so we're just super thankful that you came, and the show is a complete blast, and we loved having you in Milwaukee. Um, I thought the set list was fantastic, too. You guys played a new song from your upcoming album, and I don't remember everything about the song, but I remember the pace of it was a little different than the rest of what you guys played, which kind of added to the flow of the set list. And um, I can't wait to hear that song recorded uh hopefully not too long from now so um thank you again had a blast in milwaukee here's my question um you guys played everything sucks at this show and i noticed that the lyric to the first line of that song is different than the recorded version you didn't sing the uh the line about popcorn you said um all i ever needed was to be myself with you and i remember hearing that line on southbound to san antonio as well but then i kind of forgot about it and then when you guys played it in milwaukee i was like oh yeah he changes the first line to that song so i'm wondering why the change to that lyric and are there any other songs on which you've changed some lyrics from the recorded version until now thought that might be a fun conversation topic mike thank you for everything come back to wisconsin anytime you want i will be there and uh i'll talk to you again see ya thanks steven wow yeah uh we had a great time in wisconsin it was awesome it was sort of like the beginning of our winter because winter's been very delayed here up in the pacific northwest and uh, that chicago milwaukee trip was really the first time we saw snow and and then when we got back then it started winter started happening but but um yeah, we had a, a blast. Uh, the set list was fun. We played a bunch of fun songs. And yes, uh, we're working on a new album. We we kind of just picked a random song from the record that, that we feel like, okay, if somebody steals this song, it'll be okay. Um, but and also a song that's fun and, and, and I think is super catchy, you know. So that'll be on the new record and um, we're working on it. So thank you. And it'll be out in 2023. I don't know when, but uh, it, it will be out. We're, we're, we're just trying to get it done. Um, now your question about everything sucks is very, very interesting as well. And I'm, and I was trying to come up with a good answer for it. <laughs> I guess the truth should be the answer. Um, you know, from time to time, I just, ch I change lyrics here and there. Um, I, the story behind why I changed or how the lyric got changed of everything sucks from the popcorn lyric to be myself was it just, I was thinking about how one day I was thinking of one, one for one, I was working on sets and I was working on songs and I was working on, you know, what is it that I want to say? Right. And with that song, I was like, I really like this song, but 
it's kind of a, I don't know, it kind of feel like I grew out of that line. And it's not like it's an integral part of, of the song, but also it, it's kind of a, a catchy part of the song, right? Like it's something you would remember, popcorn. Like, yeah. Uh, but I wasn't really thinking that at the time. I was only thinking about what is it that I want to say? What is it that will make people pause for a second? You know, and, and I'm not saying that this song is a deep song at all and philosophical or anything like that. It's not. It's a love song. It's it's very simple. But um, but I guess I guess I was right because you're calling and asking about it. So that's what I mean. Is like so for for Southbound to San Antonio, it's great because you can hear the crowd singing the correct lyric and me singing the new, I guess, technically correct lyric, but it's kind of wrong because it's not the way it was. So <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, sometimes we just do things and stick with it. It feels good. feels right. And, and going back to what I was really thinking is like, what do I want to say? I want to say that if I've learned anything about life, Maybe I don't want to say that this isn't necessarily the most important thing I've learned, but but when it comes to living inside your head and living inside with your thoughts and with the experiences you've had with people socially and um, loved ones and hated ones and, and whatever, indifferent ones, but being yourself is, is if you can, if you can feel like I can be open and, and not be hated, you know, or if you can just be yourself and, and not care that you're hated. And I guess that that's something too. Right. But that's what I wanted to say just for that second is sure we can eat popcorn, but like, I feel like that's already said enough in the late show comment. Like the late show was something I, you know, we used to do all the time. We used to watch the late show with, um, with, uh, what's his name? The beard. So I can't even remember. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's like these memory. I kind of like when I write songs, a lot of times I'll put well, a lot of things. Of course, a lot of times I'll put my memories into songs. And and there's in the song isn't necessarily always about that memory, but it can add it can add a visceral reality to kind of just an idea. Right. So. The idea being, you know, you miss somebody, everything sucks when you're gone. And everybody has those experiences. Everybody's experienced loss or missing or feeling alone, you know, all of those things, right? In some way or another. So, like I said, it's not a deep song. It's a very simple song. But, I mean, it, it's a human song. And, and as as most of these things are, and, and even and by human meaning that it's flawed and I felt like, okay, I could have worked a little harder on that line. And what would I, what would I write if I wrote it now? And that's what I wrote. I wrote, be myself with you. And this is years ago now, but, but, um, you know, I just decided to sing that. And, and other times when I change lyrics, I'm just changing lyrics cause I'm changed them over time. Cause I th don't realize I'm not singing the right lyrics. I'm like literally think singing what I think they are. So that's a real thing as well. So <laughs> Um, as far as like other songs, like specific songs, uh, do your feet hurt the bridge of that? I, I change up now and again. Um, I think if it's on Southbound to San Antonio, there, there are different lyrics on that. Um, but if not, then maybe on one of the, between this world and the next, um, live internet shows that we've done. I mean, I know I've probably sang different lyrics on that a little bit, but mostly it's just because I think something's really cheesy. I think another lyric I wanted to change was some, you know, I, I'm thinking of the song and it's a, it's a very deep cut B side and it doesn't even matter. And it's probably somebody's favorite song. So honestly, it's not even worth talking about it. It's more worth doing and letting people hear it. And if they don't like it, that's fine too. But, but for me, it's more about live. Like um, we didn't like, I didn't take everything sucks and re-record the song and then, you know, put it out or whatever. We just do it live slightly differently. And that's okay because so many artists that I've I've grown up listening to will sing a little different live. Like verses can be different. Like in country songs, 
you could sing a different verse each time. As long as you sing that chorus, you're good. Rap songs, hip hop, same deal. You could have different features on your rap and then you have your chorus, your hook. So I guess I'm just taking some leniency, some artistic license with it all. And I, and I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, and it's not going to be okay with everybody. It's going to be okay with most of you. So we'll, we'll go with that. All right. Now, let's see what's what's next. Hey, Mike, this is DJ from Cincinnati. Um, I went to the Chicago show with my girlfriend, and I just got to say, you guys could not have been any cooler. This is the first time my girlfriend ever went into a mosh pit, and I we all had such a blast. Um, I've got a couple questions. Uh, my first question is, I really love the production on Teenage Politics and on the cover, and I just kind of want to ask, what was it like working with Bob Moon? Um, I know you worked with guys like Aaron Sprinkle and Steve Kravak and Jerry Finn, but just kind of wondering how it was working with Bob Moon. And then uh, my other question I have is, uh, you guys have been releasing a lot of vinyl products throughout the past couple of years, like Life in Quarantine, the box set, the brand new reissues, and was wondering, like, how long does it take from the idea to having the full product in your hand? How long does that take? Uh, thank you for being cool. Uh, hell yeah. DJ, thanks for uh, making it up to Chicago, man. It's awesome. Love hearing that. Um, great questions, too. Let me get to it. So you wanted to know about Bob Moon. You love the production on Teenage Politics. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bob Moon, just like us, was uh, was just getting started in our careers. We were just getting started. He was just getting started. And he was awesome to work with. We had no complaints except for the actual sound of the records. <laughs> Hey, you know, I mean, that's the thing is like, it was a level, it was a level and it wasn't just his fault. It was like us too. You know, if I knew, Hey, maybe you should do a guitar, a double guitar. So you have a left and right guitar. I would have told Bob, Hey, let's do a left and right guitar. Not just, you know, straight through. So there were some issues definitely, but, um, nothing that, that I'm worried about. Absolutely. Like I, it's all love. Like it's so funny because, um, we went out to lunch one day, had leftovers and there was like a lot of leftovers from this place that, uh, that Bob had and he put it in the fridge and it had his name on it, Bob. And clearly we were all together. It's not like we weren't there together. We were there eating, you know, we ate together and Yuri went in later and ate his sandwich. And Bob comes in and he's looking for his sandwich. He's like, where's my sandwich? And Yuri's like, oh, um... Was it the sandwich that was in the fridge? <laughs> and he just starts laughing. He's like, I don't know why. I kind of knew it wasn't mine. I I just, I was hungry. Like, Yuri has never done things like that. So, like, that was, like, such a random thing that we still randomly talk about to this day. Anytime somebody talks about Bob Moon, that pops into my head. And, and I'm sure it pops into everybody's head in the band. Um, so funny. But, uh, you know, like I said, like, it would be like, what was MXPX like to work with on Teenage Politics? Well, they were sloppy. Uh, Mike couldn't really sing or play bass. And Tom couldn't play guitar. And, and Yuri kind of could play drums. You know, like, and it's like, Yuri's pretty good, actually. So um, it was like that. It was like we were just so young and we were just trying to figure it out. So we made some magic. And, and on the cover is kind of the same where we just, here we go. We're just recording. We just, we didn't know. So he didn't know. We didn't know. He was just fresh out of like, I want to say recording school or something. He had gone to, he had been working, you know, down in California doing a lot of, a lot of like, uh, smaller bands and stuff, but not, I mean, we were smaller too, but you know, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was everybody's beginning of their career. And I know that Bob got a lot better, uh, as he went. And so did we. So boom. Boom shakalaka, boom. Thanks for calling, 
DJ. Oh, wait, there was one more question you had. Um, how long f for from the idea to the final product does it take to do these vinyl projects? So, of course, it varies. Some projects take longer. Some projects are quicker. I would say the quickest uh, from idea to final, probably about a year. Uh, maybe if it like back in the pre-pandemic days, less than a year, we could do like the Worry 7-inch, um, Worries and Fever Dream. That probably only took six months to do. Um, but let's say we have all the recording done and it's just like, okay, we want to do a box set. That box set took, I might even be wrong. I'm going to guess. It probably took 10 years almost. 10 years from from the, the, the initial idea of, okay, maybe 10 years might be a little too much because just because you have an idea for a box set doesn't mean you're ever going to really do it. So I feel like the idea for the box set was, yeah, let's do a box set someday. Let's write a book someday. Like it doesn't exist until you really do it. But the box set we're talking about that exists now, that was easily a six-year project from getting the licensing, um, getting the rights and the licensing and the deal done, that took the most time. And then getting the actual artwork and stuff done, that took almost a year. Getting the manufacturing done, that took um, probably six months to, probably like six months, something like that. And then shipping, in some cases, took a couple months um, it took, you know, it came in spurts and, um, it's just these days you can't really predict timelines as well because you never, you never know where you're going to get a bottleneck or you're going to get, uh, one of your suppliers that makes one thing in your product is no longer providing that product. And so you can't get that little part. There's a lot of things like that today, and there probably always was some things like that, but it's just more prevalent today. Um, and so you kind of have to like do a little more research and go, what can we get now? What can we get then? What can we get two years from now? Like that, it's going to change. And, and the look of the product and the make of the product will all change as the records do. And that's why we try to, for the most part, stick with the same record uh, company that's pressing. Um, and that way it's at least somewhat consistent they all came from the same plant um we'll we'll see if that continues in the future but i think it will um so l let's let's talk about like like a new album you know i would say from idea to ins to to final product and it's not you know our new album's not out yet it's probably going to be like three to four three years maybe you know from like when i start writing songs from like the, okay when's maybe the first song i wrote was in 2021 or 2020 right from this from this album but then you know the last song i wrote is from 2022 from you know maybe from maybe from 2022 or something like that so we'll see we'll see what what ends up happening but but um i think i'm guessing about three years for the new album by the time it's out from Hey, from idea going, like, hey, we're going to put out a new album. We don't actually have the songs yet or the demos, but I've got a you know, a couple songs in my, in my voice memos that I'm working on and let's do that, you know? For, so, um, I want to cut that down, that, that timetable down to a year and a half, maybe that would be great. Um, I think what takes so long is the artwork and the, you know, getting the, the manufacturing done, that's huge. Um, that takes a really long time these days. Um, although it's sort of starting to come to get a little better. So things things aren't always going to stay bad and get worse. They can fluctuate and get better. So that is good news for you people. So I'm excited for this new album, you guys. I can't wait to tell you what the new album is called. Can't wait to show you the artwork when it's done. Like all this stuff. Like we're just, we're working on it. And um putting the final touches on it. Actually, we're not even putting the final touches on it, to be honest. We're not there yet, but we're working on it every day. Every day, a little baby step. There you go. All right, a couple more calls. Mike Carrera, this is Chris Cooper from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
MXPX hasn't been to Grand Rapids, Michigan in like what since 2002, I think was the last time. 2002, 2003, because you guys played two years in a row. But you haven't been back here since then. And what I want to know is what's up with that. Have a good one, brother. See ya. <laughs> hey, Chris, thanks for calling, man. Um, you know what? I love Grand Rapids, man. I, you know the something station. Can't remember the name of the venue, but it's like Crossroad Station, or maybe I'm wrong, but. Definitely played there a couple times. Had good times, man. There's nothing wrong with the place. Would love to come back. And it could happen. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, if it doesn't happen, see us at the next closest place you can get to. Um, stay tuned for it. We will be doing some shows in 2023 for sure. For sure. Um, thanks for calling. Let's, uh, let's get to our last call. Hey, what's up, Mike? This is Steve from Louisiana, a longtime fan. My first uh, show, my first rock show ever, was in Baton Rouge of my LSU campus. Uh, you guys were on tour with Stave Saker at the time. I uh, just had a quick question mm -hmm. about what made you decide to start using a pick, um, I, I guess I'm guessing after Life in Journal, before Slowly, Slowly the Way the Buffalo came out. Um, what made you decide that? And personally, I think it sounds better with the pick. Um, but yeah, thanks for taking my call. See you. Steve. What's up, buddy? Baton Rouge. I remember that show. If it's the show that I'm thinking of, if it's what I'm thinking of, I remember that show. It could be a different show because we played with Steve Zaker a lot. But um, we were in a van. Steve Zaker was in a van. This was probably late 90s. And we played outside in a park next to this commemorative, like, Civil War thing. It was, like, on a plat. It was, like, a, a platform, like a cement pad. And then behind us was, like, the park and trees and forests and stuff. And, like, in front of us was, like, a park and trees and forests. And stuff. It, was so, it was so different. You know, it was, like, we're just in a park. We're playing a show in a park. And 50 people are here. It was like 50 people or maybe less. I don't know. It wasn't terrible or anything, but it was just like super weird. And I wonder, back then, you know, it. back then it was weird. And, and, and if you if you went to a show like that now, you'd be like, what? Like, this is super weird. But like, I'm sure people going to shows then didn't know that it was weird. They were like, well, it's, there's a band playing in the park. All right, let's do this. Let's go play or let's go see them. Um, but I just remember it being, uh, all the people are super nice. You know, the people, are a lot of, a lot of nice people, uh, willing to talk, tell their stories, listen to your story. Um, we had some, an opening band that was interesting. Um, not a great band at all. Terrible in fact, but it, it was, it was weird. I'll just put it. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. Okay. <laughs> You're making me get, get into those memories, Steve. <laughs> just breaking into the memory bank. Uh, LSU. Nice. Um, but I love your question about why switch from fingers to a pick on bass guitar. And those that know anything about the bass guitar, you know, a real bass player plays with their fingers. That's, that's kind of like the thing, right? And it, it'd be like, um, a drummer playing side stick, you know, like real drummers play side stick, you know, or whatever, like, but only certain types of real drummers, you know, so it's not really a thing anymore. And nowadays I don't think it's a big, of, as big of a deal, but as I was growing up playing bass, I was playing with my fingers You know, I grew up, uh, my influence, probably my greatest influence was Carl Alvarez descendants all. And, uh, he played with his fingers. And Sting loved Sting from the police. He also played with his fingers. Played with his thumb, in fact. He like dunk 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 dunk. So weird. Um anyway, I, I study the way people play a lot of times. But um great story behind it. So for for a while, Steve Kravak was recording us. I played I recorded chick magnet with my fingers and he's like i don't know it just doesn't sound quite right 
And so he asked me, hey, just like try a pick. And I tried a pick. And it sounded glassy. It sounded nice. It sounded even and not slappy. And we kept that. We're like, do 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 and but I didn't change to a pick after that. I was just like, maybe I'll just play the pick on that song or something. And fast forward to the we go on tour that winter and we were on tour in, in Canada with Bracket. It was Bracket and maybe Reset. I'm not sure if Reset was on that tour or not. It was a full tour from Vancouver, Washington, or sorry, Vancouver, BC, Canada, uh, all the way east to Montreal, Quebec. And we played all these little cities along the way, uh, you know, Thunder Bay, Ontario, and Edmonton, and I think Calgary, and um, Regina, and, you know, who knows what all the places we played on that tour. Um, played, of course, Toronto, and, and um, I want to say The Office in, in uh, London, Ontario, The Office, or is it called Call The Office? I'm not sure. Uh, cool venue called Call The Office. Um we played uh, Quebec City. We played Montreal, like I said. And about halfway through that tour, we were we were in well, one Calgary was a crazy party town, so we we're just having a great time on this tour. And uh, I'm just trying to think of what city it was. It's not super important what city it was. I think it was like some, like I said, mid like Toronto or something like that, I was on the bus and I was leaving the bathroom and I, I slammed the door of the bathroom and the bathroom door of the bus um, clipped my finger, one of my fingers, and it was my middle finger that was, I think it was my middle finger, wasn't it? Might have been this finger. It's been so long. Anyway, long story short this finger just started welling up and it hurt to even play. I, I ended up taping this finger up and just so I could still play with my fingers, but it was so painful. So I started like trying to play with a pick and it was less painful. And I was like, Oh, good, good, good. But with a pick, I would also get very, very cramped up because I wasn't used to playing with a pick. So like your forearm gets cramped up and you're just like, ah, oh, this is hard. So that was a thing. We finally make it to Montreal. I'm playing with my, you know, hand all taped up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I'm, I've got my, everywhere we go, we're in hot tubs at the hotel. But I can't put my hand in the water. So I'm just hanging out in the hot tub with my fingers out of the water. Not because it was slammed in the bathroom door. That's a side thing. That's pain. But because my calluses on my fingers are hurting every day they hurt worse and worse and so i got to keep them out of the water because the water softens them up trying to get the the hard callus to stay and so i'm just sitting here in, the, in these hot tubs and this was a thing for tours and tours and tours so this is building up building up building up and finally i'm just like this has gotta there's gotta be a better way you know i'm gonna try just go and pick the whole time Steve Kravak says it sounds great. He says, this is what punk rock sounds like. Just try it. And so that's why on the next album, slowly going the way of the Buffalo, play the whole thing with a pick. And it's just got that jangly sound. And um, I never really went back to fingers after that. I can play with my fingers a little bit, but I don't have the endurance that I used to have. I don't have the the speed that I used to have and the even just the, the accuracy. Um, but that would come back if I just played a little bit. Um, just like anything, the more you do it, it's painful at first, but it gets easier. And I would say a similar thing happened when I was playing with Tumble Down. I would now and again, I would be on the upright bass and I'd be playing with my fingers on the upright bass and that would start getting my fingers. Just playing a couple songs was just, oh my gosh, that's so painful. And so I had to work my, my fingers back and make it work. And, and I did. So, you know, if you're playing that thing hours and hours every day, one at first, it's going to hurt like a zombie. But after a while, you start building that callus, you're going to start getting used to that, 
that movement, that rub, that pain, whatever it is, and you get stronger. So like I said, baby steps, right? Let's bring it all full circle, people. Baby steps. Um, so I switched to a pick, never looked back, and I still play with a pick to this day. And um, I'm not embarrassed at all to say that I play with a pick. And the picks that I use are these in tune guitar picks, in tune GP. Um, they're these Grip X tri, I don't know, what do they call them? Tri, triple flant, triple tri triangles or something. But they're, you know, just bigger. They're just bigger than a regular guitar pick. This is Pee Wee Herman. Sorry, it's kind of blurry. But um, this is Pee Wee Herman, and, and this is the size pick I use. I think the, the thickness is like 88, something like that, somewhere in there, 0.88. Um, but I love this in, in tune guitar picks do all our custom, custom picks. Very cool. Um, that was, that was an interesting one, Steve. I appreciate that. Steve from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right, you guys next week's Christmas. By the time you guys get this, I think I'm going to take next week off. I hadn't really thought about it and I just realized Sunday is Christmas but, you know, if I get to it, then you'll get another one. That's it. Straight up. Um, remember, this Friday, December 23rd, Christmas Eve Eve, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, MXPX free, live on the Internet, actually live on the Internet. Um, let us know what you want to hear in the comments. Get in the chat room early, all of that. Um you can let us know on the podcast comments too. If you're in the Facebook group, My Career Podcast Facebook, or if you're on the Instagram, My Career Podcast, Twitter, My Career Pod. Yeah, that's it. All right, you guys. And of course, Facebook, my Facebook, My Career Video. All these episodes come out on, did I say Facebook? YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, uh, My Career Video on YouTube. You can watch it. Rather than just listen, it's up to you. Do what you got to do. Uh, a lot more people listen uh, than watch. And I don't blame them because look at this mug. All right, you guys. Uh, shout out to Bob McKnight for producing and uh, for barely producing. Kidding. Uh, and editing. He does a great job with editing the podcast every week. So I appreciate it, buddy. Bob McKnight. Check out his podcast called The Bob and Katie Show. Merry Christmas to you and the family. And uh, if you guys want to call in, Leave a voicemail. Call me 360-830-6660. You got it. It's all in the show notes if you need it. All right, you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.